Hi everyone, so this video is about a very important topic in genetics that is interpretation of pedigree chart. So this is a very frequently asked questions in the TAS exam, especially in the TAS exam. If you look through the recalls or any sample paper, you will find at least one question asking, they'll put up a pedigree chart and they'll ask you to interpret the pattern of inheritance, okay? That, uh, that is whether it's autosomal dominant or recessive or X-linked dominant or recessive. So there are certain rules that you need to follow if you, uh, you know, if you want to uh, interpret it well. So I have written those. Let's, uh, let's, let's check them out. Okay. At first, I have to count the number of male and females affected. If both male and females are affected, then it is autosomal. Okay. Second one, look at all the generations. If there is any skipping of generations, if not dominant. So we'll see that if all the generations are affected. If all the generations are affected or more than two or three generations are affected, that means it's most likely to be dominant. If, you know, only one generation is affected, no parents, no grandparents, only a child is affected, it's likely to be recessive. Now, once in a blue moon affected, it, that is autosomal recessive. Now, why is it called once in a blue moon uh, affected? Because uh, individuals with autosomal recessive, they usually suffer from infertility or uh, they die very early. So, that is the reason they are not able to transmit the disease to the next generation. So, usually you will find that nobody in the entire family tree is affected except for one child. So, that is once in a blue moon autosomal recessive. Now, this one is very important if no females are affected at all that is x-link recessive disease yes if male to may affected male give rise to affected male that is autosomal dominant that is the affected father give rise to an affected son so there is male to male transmission in autosomal dominant okay and there is no male to male transmission in x-link disease whether it is x-link recessive or x-link dominant there is no male to male transmission all right now these are the rules that you need to keep in mind when you see a pedigree chart now i'll show you some certain examples okay let's look at those okay now what do you think about this first example okay so we are seeing okay one generation two generation both generations are being affected so it is likely to be some kind of dominant disorder now you see male as well as female are affected okay so it is likely to be you know autosomal you see male as well as female is affected two generations are affected so it is likely to be autosomal dominant all right now let us come to this example number two you can see that first all generations are not affected two generations are affected all right okay now you can see that there is no male to male transmission here here the male is affected but he's not giving rise to any affected male or any affected female here as well here the female is giving rise to she might have been a carrier so what is happening is that we learned in the previous uh, page that when no female is affected at all then it is likely to be an x-linked recessive disease so here we have two hints one is that no females are affected and second one is there is no male to male transmission so it is x-linked recessive disease all right Let's move on to our next generation. Okay, next example. So this is the scene of once in a blue moon. You can see that their grandparents, parents, and then the kids, none of them are affected. Once in a blue moon, one kid is affected. If you see such case, it is a clear case of autosomal recessive. So this is the exam. These are the uh, examples of certain examples I have taken from the survival guide. You can look for example in the survival guard, guide or the SOP book and uh, if you find any problem do message me or uh, just let me know what all things you want me to add and i found this topic to be very important and very frequently asked so i wanted to add this okay so what uh okay so these are the things you need to keep in mind i have given the list in a you know good way so you can just uh, take a screenshot of it and keep it with you i suggest that you write it or take a screenshot and whenever you're solving a pedigree chart just follow the rules and try to solve them i hope it will help you thank you if you really like my video please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel thank you so much